All my bags are packed I'm ready to go I'm standing here Outside your door How many times have you started singing a song and you think, that is too low for me to sing. Well, how about this cool little tool you can use called a capo or a capo, depending on what part of the world you live in. Um, you can put it maybe on the second fret. All my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. How cool is that? My friends who play piano wish there was something like a piano capo because transposing on a piano is a pain in the wazoo, but us guitar players can just slap on a capo. So I'm going to talk more about a capo in this lesson, but first I want to tell you about my favorite capo, which is a Kaiser capo. It's a clip-on. You only need one hand to put it on. Voila. I've had this one for like 20 years and it's still going strong, still holds really tight. And um, this appeals to me. I don't know. Maybe you don't care, but it come, they come in different colors. I have a white one. I have pink one. They even have one that comes in a camouflage green. So if you want to know more about Kaiser, check out the link somewhere in this frame or perhaps underneath this video. Here's how a capo works. There's the G we all know and love. Okay, so if you want to raise the pitch, put the capo in whatever fret you like, and then do that same shape like you normally would, only now treating this as the top of the guitar. So that means the G would be here same is true for any other chord shape. Here's what normally would be a C, here's a D shape. See how simple that is? So I already demonstrated putting it on the second fret. Um, you know, you could go crazy. If you've got a pretty good guitar, you could put it as far up as you want and it's going to sound great. Get really crazy and put it like on the ninth fret. Oh, my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. You know, that might be better just to transpose it if you have to put it up that high. And if you want to know about transposing, I have a lesson about that, and you can find a link underneath here. The other thing to keep in mind with the capo is that it will put your guitar a little out of tune. So, for instance, if I put my um, capo here and strum it, it sounds pretty good to my ear, but let me check it with a tuner because when I check it with a tuner, I'm probably going to find a couple of strings that are a little out. Yeah, see that top string is a little sharp? That one's good. That one's a little sharp and so on. So. Uh, you might want to check out the tuning as you use a capo. Now, if you're playing by yourself, it may not matter so much, especially if the tuning is off just by a slight amount. But if you're playing with somebody else, you definitely need to check your tuning each time you put on a capo. And also, I keep saying that I'm playing a G chord here, but you know what? Oops, <laughs> that's my tuner. Too many tools here. Um, <laughs> so if I put the capo right here on the second fret and I play a G shape, technically it's not a G, it's an A. Now, if you're playing alone, it doesn't really matter. You don't really care what the name of the chord is, or maybe you do, but you probably don't. But if you're playing with somebody else, it's gonna be a problem. So if you do this chord, the capo on the second fret, and you're playing with a piano player, and you say, yeah, I'm playing a G, they're gonna play a G chord, and it's gonna sound like the soundtrack to a Stephen King novel. Uh, you probably don't want that sound. <laughs> so what happens is, the farther up the neck your capo goes, the more it goes up in pitch. For instance, if it's on the second fret, like it is here, it moves it up a full step. So this is actually an A chord. I know, I'm messing with your mind, right? Because your brain says, no, oh, it's a G shape. Well, yeah, it's a G shape, but it's an A chord. If you move it up two more, now you've got a B. So the thing to keep in mind is, when you're moving up between B and C, or E and F, it's only one fret. Everything else is two frets. So if I move up one from the B to the C, there you go, that's actually a C chord. 
Now, if you're confused by all these pitch changes, I do have a chart and I'll put it up right now. A question I often get from beginners is where do I put the capo? Well, you put the capo where it's comfortable for your voice. So, you know, see how high it needs to be in order for you to sing it, or if there is a singer, or sometimes to play it because the frets are a little closer up here. So if you're doing something pretty intricate, sometimes it helps to put a capo up here. I also get questions about where within the fret do you put the capo? Some people think that you have to put it exactly in the metal, straight up and down. But you know what you don't. If you get a little sloppy and it's a little slanted, it's still going to sound okay. Also, if you get it right up close to the fret, it's probably still going to sound okay. You do not want it exactly on top of the fret because then you're going to get a weird sound. See how it's kind of buzzy? And then if you get it up too far, you're going to be in the next fret. So that's something that you need to be careful about. So there you go. There's using a capo. And remember that I recommend Kaiser capos. They're pretty cool. And I've uh, got a link for where you can purchase one for your very own. Uh, please check out my other lessons. I have over 500 for beginning and intermediate guitar, ukulele, and mandolin players. And you can subscribe, right? Red button is right there, it's really easy. And if you wanna support the work that I do, please buy me a coffee, it's only $3. You can also support me via Patreon. And for as little as $5 a month, you get some really cool perks like exclusive Zoom lessons from me. YouTube's great, but with Zoom, you can interact uh, personally with me. I can hear you play, I can give you tips. It's pretty cool if I don't say so myself. Check out my original music at jamieanderson.com. Thanks for tuning in.